Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Monday, July 25th, 2016. And here are some of today's trends in the news. What a weekend we had here at Colonial Kingston at the Academy, full house on our On Trendpreneur Conference. And I must say, the greatest thing about it were the people there. They're not like-minded people. They're open-minded people from all over the world, from Hong Kong, from Ireland, from Switzerland, from Chile, all across Canada, Australia, even Staten Island and New Jersey. New Yorkers, local people. What a trip. It was sensational. And of course, closed out with the Kaiser Report. Max Kaiser, Stacey Herbert did a live filming that's going to be showed, of course, taped, but done live at the Academy. It'll be on a week from Tuesday on the Kaiser Report. And they were great. They gave a great entrepreneur insights, observations, and how to get there. Wonderful, wonderful group. Big party out in the Franz Rogan Garden. The trio playing outside, fine music, sensational food, a great success. And again, I thank the people. It was a real honor. Moving on to the markets. Everything's up and down just a little bit. For example, Nikkei down a little bit. Shanghai and Hang Seng hanging up just a little bit more. And then you look at FTSE, Ooh, it's down a little bit, but CAC is up a little bit, and so too is the DAX. Over here in the States, boop, everything's just down a little bit. Gold down, but oil got whacked. Boom. Let's see why. U.S. crude oil futures settled down over 2%, both of them, between U.S. crude and Mr. Brent crude. And here's the reason. Genscape data pointed to an inventory rise. Look at this. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horse shit. It's horse shit. They're going up and down a million barrels here and there. It's a global issue, and it's a global slowdown. So now we're looking at oil going down to, you know, April lows. And what are they waiting for? U.S. Federal Reserve is scheduled to conclude its two-day meeting Wednesday afternoon. And you know what they're going to say. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. And of course, if you're tired of hearing what the Fed has to say, you can wait until Thursday because the Bank of Japan decision on monetary policy is expected overnight Thursday Eastern time. Traders will be watching for further accommodation and the reaction of the dollar yen. Interesting. Cash levels are at the highest level since November 2001, according to the latest Bank of America Merrill Lynch fund manager survey. And then you look at Japan. Exports, you ready for this? They fell in June 7.4% year on year, the ninth consecutive monthly fall. Imports fell 18.8%. Oh, but it was slightly better than the 19.7% decline. So I get it. They're buying less. They're selling less as the yen is getting stronger and they're buying less. With a strong yen, they should be buying more. It's a recession. It's not working. They're waiting for more helicopter dough. So again, they're waiting. What will the Bank of Japan do on July 28th? Gold. Pairs losses as stocks turn lower ahead of Fed 
and Bank of Japan meeting. That's the headline. Speculators cut their record bullish bets on COMEX gold contracts for a second straight week. And again, the markets are waiting for the central banks. To us, it's bigger than that because here you go. Of the 160 fund managers surveyed by Bank of America Merrill Lynch, 39% expect helicopter money in the next 12 months, up from 27%. For the broader global economy, they're expecting fiscal stimulus, also included in infrastructure spending, creating wealth out of thin air because the numbers stink. World Bank molds different approach as prospects for global growth darken. Ooh, why, they're peddling pessimism, I'm telling you. Yeah. At a time when weaker global growth prospects are causing concern and even impacting the World, goal, World Bank's goal to alleviate poverty, its president is taking a different tact to confront the challenge. What we're really focusing on is this a whole other set of investment that can be made that will prepare countries for 5, 10, 15 years? And you know what this is. That was bullshit. Yeah. They haven't done anything. And the facts are right here, according to the World Bank. Studies showed people in the 80th and 90th percentile so that's like 90% of the people of income had benefited the least from globalization. So 90% down, isn't that a nice way to put it? They benefited the least. They didn't benefit at all. They got screwed. It's in the numbers, but they're going to come up with a new plan. And I could sell it to you cheaply. After you buy the Brooklyn Bridge, you'll, you'll make a lot of dough on the Brooklyn Bridge. Things are happening over there in Brooklyn. Again, U.S. groups hoard cash as uncertainty grows and earnings expectations dim. Remember all of the... Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Well, it's Bullshit Monday. Remember how they kept telling us to look for a lot higher earnings? Well, now the game is changing. U.S. companies are increasing their holdings of cash in response to a rise in economic and geopolitical uncertainty, according to a survey of corporate treasurers. Yeah, peddling fiction, I tell you. Everything is happy. Hey, it's so great that Restaurant chains feel bite. You ready for this? Boy, of falling confidence. Yeah, that's why it's going down. Not because people don't have money. No, it's falling confidence. Say the con men. Here, you know the message of the Trends Journal. Think for yourself. Howard Schultz, Starbucks chairman, did not hold back this week when he said political and social unrest was partly to blame for the company's third quarter earnings miss. A profound weakness in consumer confidence surrounding the presidential election. Civil unrest and heightened racial tensions and terrorism. Yeah, that's stopping people from going out and drinking, again, thinking for yourself, your crappy, bitter, lousy coffee. That's what's stopping people. And the arrogance. But when you're a billionaire, you can have that arrogance. Quote, no one should misinterpret or in any way look at the challenges that we face. Many, many other companies are facing as something that has been done before. This is quite unusual. It's unsettling. 
It has nothing to do with terrorism. It has nothing to do with the presidential elections. It has to do, Mr. Schultz, because you're a smart guy, you made a lot of money, read the numbers. 90% of the people got shafted from globalization and people like you that put everybody else out of business so you could grab more dough. All right? Hey, but no one should misinterpret what I said. No, because I know best. And what else? Ah, weakness in oil equipment and locomotives takes toll on GE. Union Pacific net off 19%. The reason it's off 19%, the reason that weakness in oil equipment is it's because of terrorism. No, it's not. It's because of the elections. No, no, no. It's because of consumer uncertainty. It's because of... Bullshit level, DEFCON 5. That's right. Because they won't admit the truth. They're cowards. They're all cowards. And as my mother, when I was a little boy, before I knew what the word meant, said to me more than once until I knew what it meant, I hate cowards. So I would never do anything to disrespect my mother. May her soul rest in peace. Yep. Chief Executive Lance Fritz, this is Union Pacific, cited a never negative impact on a strong dollar on exports, that's not it, and relatively weak demand for consumer goods. In an interview, he also said businesses were being affected by competition due to excess capacity in all modes of freight, transport, including barges, trucking, shipping, and rail. All right? How about that for a fact? And, again, going back to oil, back to shipping, back to the real world, Nigeria optimistic of recovery from crisis. Boy, this is bullshit. Oh, Monday. come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. You got it, man. This country's going down. Look at those oil prices. And you know we've been saying this over and over again. We're at the height of the driving season, and you have gasoline inventories building. There's no recovery worldwide coming from the World Bank and everybody else, but this guy's putting on a happy face. Nigeria remains hopeful of an economic revival, its finance minister said, even as the country slides into recession. Hopeful. Yeah, hope and change you could believe in. Home sales picked up in the U.S. in June, up nicely, 1.1% last month. Then you get to the article, which again, always read to the end. It's very important, just don't be a headline reader. According to the National Association of Realtors, they're saying pending contracts for home sales and foot traffic at open houses have both fallen recently. So, although we have that boost, they're saying it's a decline coming because a lot of this has to do with record low interest rates. Francis Hermes rings up slowing sales growth. You know what I keep saying, the fish rots from the head down. Whether it's the mindset of murder from the chiefs on top, the commanders, the presidents, prime ministers, or chancellors that slaughter people, and then it, the rest of the people down the line feel it's okay to slaughter, as we did with the trend alert, the retail is rotting from the head down, right from here, down to Starbucks. And what else do we have here? Now, another bad week in Germany. Lone gunman's rampage puts Munich on lockdown. Another bomb went off. So here's the response. Germany increases security at railway stations and airports after four violent attacks in less than a week. You know what that is. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Total bullshit. They keep robbing us of our rights. 
they keep making their country, our country, and every country into a police state. And no one wants to look at the cause and the effect. You would not have these migrant issues if you didn't have the wars that were slaughtering people all over the world, creating hate, creating blowback, and creating a lot of sick minds. And then finally, tonight, it's the big night over there. Well, not another big night, another big night of the last big night of the Democratic presidential reality show from Philadelphia. I mean, you know what a, how I think of the elections. Hitler or Hitler, or Trump or Clinton. And here, this is Trump's at his speech last week. Nobody knows the system better than me. Nobody. Hey, nobody. Nobody knows it better than me. Hey, Mussolini, take it easy. Which is why I alone can fix it. You imagine the arrogance of this jerk. That's all they are. Cowards, liars, freaks, and fools. So now Hitler has main stage. Listen to her, folks. Here we go. Shows this guy Kane, right? And the um, liberal progressive element is not happy about it. In choosing Ms. Mr. Kane as her running mate, Ms. Clinton sent a strong signal that she plans to govern from the center, not the left. Indeed, in a recent interview, on CBS, the clown broadcasting system, she described the party she leads as center-left, putting particular emphasis on the word center. That's now. But you know what she said back during the debates with Bernie? I'm a progressive. Yeah, and now she's shifting, just like Obama did. I'm a progressive who gets things done, a proud, modern progressive. But here she says now, particularly emphasizing the word center. Roseanne DeMauro, executive director of the National Nurses United, <laughs> said it's outrageous. She's a Bernie supporter. It was a snub to the Bernie base. What did you expect? Grow up. And Bernie's not only going to snub you, he's going to screw you. He's already doing it. That's right. Backtrack Bernie. Bernie Sanders' call to elect Clinton booed by his delegates. Bernie Sanders drew loud boos from his delegates Monday, today, when he told the crowd of nearly 1900, we've got to get Hillary Clinton elected. Yeah. You know why? She's fighting for the middle class. <laughs> the presidential reality show. Liars, cowards, freaks, and fools. The only way we're going to change we need new parties. These are corrupt. You know what's going to happen. You know where it's going. Regardless of who wins, we lose. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.